we talked a lot about Trump lately, so we've been getting a lot of Trump bandwagon fans, which is fine. Um, just remember, we're not like pro Trump or against Trump. We're also not like huge Democrats or Republican supporters. We're very independent. We just we just want to criticize these politicians as much as possible. Well, you have to. You, you, we live in America. We have the right to criticize. Oh yeah, it's in our freedom of speech. Our freedom of speech. Um. So, we've been very critical of Joe Biden. I very think critical. I think we're both don't like what's been going on with this administration. Uh, that's why we see a challenger coming in. So Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, coming in. And I think this tweet is a good starting point to really get to know who he is. Um, do you want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. So he puts out a tweet that says, I have known and liked Joe Biden for many years, but we differ profoundly on fundamental issues such as corporate influence in government, censorship, civil liberties, poverty, corruption, and war policy, among others. I look forward to engaging him in debates and town hall. Um, again, he tweets, I am a multi-generational Democrat, but I think our party has gone off track. Remember when we upheld the interests of the poor and middle class against big corporations on Wall Street? Remember when we were the party of peace, civil liberties, and people power? I claim to, I don't know if I can expand that, show more. Yeah, you, you should be able to. I reclaim. Um, I aim to reclaim my party and its traditional values. I mean, that's, I mean, there's more about him, yeah, that we could talk about. Well, um, let's talk about that tweet. What do you, what do you, you just read that. While you were reading that, how did that hit you? Your opinion. So looking at like a perspective for like say a Democrat, the Democratic Party, probably something refreshing. Like if you're very Democrat, I'd say, you know what, let's As our sisters. Yeah, like let's this guy is probably a better solution than what Joe Biden has to offer. Because what we've seen from Joe Biden is an increase in the military industrial complex. Like what happened to the anti-war rhetoric we used to hear from our Democrats? It was lies. Not. They do it through proxy wars. They're, yes. they're very pro-proxy war, but not direct war. I think that's how, how I view Democrats. I don't know how I view Democrats, because I don't view them as Republican Democrats. I view them as human beings. And, you know, it's just hard talking to either hardcore it Republicans really, or Democrats. It really is, because for me, viewing Democrats, they like to dangle the carrot that we're for the poor middle class. And whenever they can't get anything done, which is pretty much every time, because of special interest, they just blame the Republicans of why they couldn't get anything done. But keep voting for us. That's how I feel about Democrats. I don't know. How do you feel about them? I think arguing with a Democrat is harder than arguing with a Republican in, in my time with them. Because to some aspect, if you don't agree with them, you're against them on both sides. But it feels more like that with my demogra demographic, democratic friends. Mm -hmm. And when I argue with our line Republican friends, they, they don't crucify me. They're not shoving it down my throat or getting personal, right? They don't get personal. They just spit facts. Some of my Democratic friends, they get so mad that they start going at me personally. I'm like, whoa, dude, we're talking about Biden and AOC, not me, not my situation. I have different views from what they think, but then they're drinking the Kool-Aid and they're so hardcore on that. My buddy Sean, my buddy Ben, they're hardcore Democrats. And because I, you know, will question them or joke around, they think I'm a Republican. Neither. Like, where I, I, I could criticize needed. Republicans just as bad, too. I mean, I can do it right now if you want me to. Yeah, let's do it. No, I'm just kidding. But no, like, a lot of, they both have good policies, but they both have bad policies as well. well. I want to just vote on the individual. I don't want to think about the Democrat or Republican part because we both know both of them get in for special interests and get rich off that. So they like to dangle carrots in front of people, say, we're going to do this and that, and they don't. Oh, well, they said they'll try, but they got blocked, but they made the attempt. But how really did they try? We all know it's just an act. But, you know, they get all this special interest money to get voted in. 
that's just weird about a, a voting. It's like we hear the people like no one wants to listen to the debates and make a judgment themselves. People just watch the news or you have everything debate. that scrolls in their social media feed and be like, oh, OK, I'll vote for this guy because I see him all the time and he makes sense to me. But it's really the money behind it that gets his face into your eyes. Not you have to actually sit down and watch the debates, listen to them, see what they're actually for. Be like, listen to them and make a critical, have a critical thought, not regurgitated stuff that you keep hearing from your MSNBCs or your Fox News. Actually, listen to these candidates for a change, not regurgitated stuff that you hear from your friends, your neighbors who are also regurgitating the information too, and who knows how they distort the information because they're heavily influenced on their biases. But Republicans are another one that just runs everything on a credit card and says our economy is good. You know, they are very much a borrow, spend the money. Hey, look, we have good times, but look at our debt. Look yeah, at our deficit. Rob Peter, pay Paul kind of thing. If I mean, I'll I'll credit the Democrats that they actually make an attempt to bring down the deficit. Not a good one, sure, but at least they make an attempt. Republicans, I never see them try to reduce the deficit, let alone the debt. I mean, they talk about our spending all the time, sure, but what are they doing? They keep borrowing and spending. Well, I think we screwed up by doing too much free money and stuff during COVID. I think we locked down too much, keeping kids away from school. But then again, looking back, you do, I remember people were super scared. And I was like, cool, you know, I, I'm not against it. I, I just, for me, I didn't think it was going to be as bad as, as it was going to be. But I respect people's fears, right? Like I tell people, well, this person's scared, like, of this and i don't know if this is real or not this is my personal opinion that i don't think it's as bad as people say it is but that's my personal opinion and i i can i can have my personal opinion but don't criticize mm -hmm. me for it don't crucify me for it and then when you find out it really wasn't as bad and who says oh yeah we, we you know we did too much we shouldn't have done this or that like it's not like haha i told you it's like see we learn from that Mm -hmm. So maybe the next pandemic, we don't get too crazy and lock people in because when you do that, people go crazy, right? Mm -hmm. The whole thing with RFK, because I do not want to like go on a slippery slope and talk about other stuff, segue to other stuff. RFK here, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is being silenced like on Instagram, like they blocked him on Instagram, right? And in the information age, that's wrong, dude. That They did this to Trump in 2020. You know, like he's the president. He should have his stage to reach out to, you know, people that want to hear his message. You know, mm -hmm. that's exactly what's going on with RFK. You know, they're shutting him off from Instagram. But guess what? Twitter said they're not going to. So we're good on that. You know, he'll have his voice on Twitter, but he's not going to debate Biden. Good luck. From what I understand, and I could be wrong with this, but I heard that he, he got silenced from social media platforms because of his stance on vaccines. He's very anti-vaccine, not just COVID vaccine, but like all vaccines. Um, I could be misquoting, but I, I, from my understanding- No, I heard that. Is that he, he's one of those people that believes that vaccines cause autism. And he doesn't believe that there's enough science. And when the science is brought up to him, he doesn't believe the science. So it's just like, which is it? Correct, no, but he's, that's his opinion. So you're gonna, mm -hmm. again, crucify him because he, he has, the freedoms to say something that you don't like goes against your narrative. So you're going to say, we're going to shut him down because he's dangerous. No, he's just, no, I don't believe in speech. I don't believe in censoring him. No, he shouldn't censor anybody. People should have their own critical thoughts for themselves, not regurgitated information. Be like, okay, he believes that vaccines causes autism. My beliefs are it doesn't, or maybe it does and aligns with his beliefs and people like him for that. Either, or at least have your own critical thought, not regurgitated information that's out there in the media or just, they silence him because they don't want you to hear that he said that. They don't want you to hear that he says, oh, vaccines causes autism. Vaccines horrible for you. I mean, he made a comparison about the vaccines and controlling people the same way they did with Holocaust. People in the Holocaust, it was just extreme. I, I know what you're talking about. Is it extreme? I don't know. I don't know. We weren't there for the Holocaust, right? Holocaust was horrible. Like, it was horrible. Like, in the beginning, they lied to those people. Oh, you're going to get on this bus or you're going to get on this train. Everything's all right. Everything's going to be cool. And they go into this building and they don't come back out. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they're, I know a lot of people that were scared. They thought this is the same thing with this. You got to take this shot, this and that. I don't know. I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but take the shot if you want. Don't take it if you don't want to. But 
if you take the shot, you're protected, then why do you care if this person doesn't take the shot? And this is just personal opinion. We're going to go down a rabbit hole if we start arguing about this. I know you have an opinion about this. I have an opinion. My sisters have an opinion. I love you guys, but you guys have a crazy opinion too. But we're all we, we, we're all allotted that crazy opinion, right? We can say whatever we want. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mean you have to believe me. But if I believe it, respect it, right? Mm-hmm. I believe in Jesus. You don't believe in Jesus. Not you, but, you know, uh, someone on the other side. Do you believe in Jesus? Yeah, he existed. I yeah, believe he there existed. You go. <laughs> Jesus was a real person. But that's my point of view is, like, respect other people's opinions. You know, you don't walk in their shoes. It's not like they thought about it right there and then. They're, they spent their whole lives being not trained, but they grew up a certain way. Mm-hmm. So you can't knock on them if they're scared of the vaccine or not scared of the vaccine. There's two. I see both sides, and I agree. Okay, if you fear it, that's on you. I respect the fact that you're scared to not have the shot, but respect the fact that, of someone else that is scared to take the shot. Okay, it's the same same difference. In yeah, my res- opinion. just respect people's choices. Exactly. So just you don't have to engage in an argument with them. You don't have to hate them for it either. Mm, you don't have to be so judgmental with their choices. You know how many people like haven't talked to their family members or friends because of that? I've lost friends because of this, because mm-hmm. of the vaccines and stuff. You know, which is fine. You know, and it sucks. I've lost a couple good friends that we don't even talk at all because of like how my stance or what I believe or me not wanting to believe what they want to believe to their rhetoric or you know their their train of thought so it is what it is you know it's life you move forward and you just go from there so rfk jr let's debate i want to see him debate biden that's it do you think he'll debate biden biden won't debate him if biden didn't debate trump and he doesn't do town halls and stuff there's no way he's gonna be in the basement again which really pisses me off as a president if you're the president you got to take the tough questions because you can't go overseas and expect them not to give you tough questions which when he does go overseas they don't give him he doesn't even take questions from the foreign press no he doesn't take any questions at all unless they're already you know unless he knows what the questions are they're ready right. for him and right. he, he, all he has to do is answer them for what he's prepped for we just can't question him where he's on his toes but he doesn't know the question yeah, I had a buddy of mine when I, you know, he saw the podcast. He's like, "Oh, Trump didn't win CNN, you know this and that." You're crazy. I'm like, you know what? Who, who you know who's crazy? You guys are because you don't want Trump. You don't want Biden to do that. Biden never does that. Biden won't do that. Mm-hmm. Biden was not gonna f- even go against his own, you know, his own party, R- RFK. They're gonna drown RFK, dude. I'm telling you right now, the Democrats won't let RFK get up there. I thought Bernie did better when he, you know, Biden got the presidential nominee. Mm-hmm. I thought Bernie should have got it, but they gave it to Biden. You know, I think, but it is what it is. Well, Biden came in late in the race and wins it. And so it me it, it felt very status quo. It felt very corporate influence because he had a lot of people with their own ideas that they, you know they didn't. Not a lot of corporate interests had control of them. But all of a sudden, Biden walks in. And he's like, "Oh, I'm I'm the winner now." Yep. I'm the I'm the Democratic candidate, so it's there's a lot of things that's involved instead of just picking the right person. It's just like who's backing them up, who's giving them the money. Correct. But I digress on politics, though. Yeah, I hate politics it. is exhausting. Um, thanks for watching our clip. If you want to see more clips like this and you like our views, like the show, click here for some more clips. If you want to hear the whole podcast, watch the whole podcast. Click here for the whole podcast. Remember, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll get back to you. Thank you, and have a great day.